Thanksgiving in Charlotte where it's been extended to the years by correctional officers, victims of abuse by negativity. I've often talked about inmate abuse and neglect, or very little about how correctional officers have been abused and neglected. Thanks to a gentle reminder by a friend of mine, I think this is time in this video is about addressing workplace cultures. And cultures have fostered discrimination, unfair labor practices, humiliation, embarrassment, used as a management tool, and other items that are not readily talked about very much in the daily life or impact of the correction officer's world. So bear with me as I do this video negativity in the workplace. The first thing the reader needs to realize is correction officer is disconnected from the moment they walk through that gate and leave the real world behind. They're isolated from the public, their families, sometimes their co-workers. As it depends what the assignment they draw when they come on the shift. Corrections is fundamentally a boring job. It is uh, one of those situations where it can create self-doubt, self-criticism, and self-destruction. It's hampered by working with poorly ill-trained correctional officers or ill-educated correctional officers. That is created through shoddy or poor hiring practices. That makes it much more frustrating for those individuals that are either better educated or better trained than those that are assigned to work with. It also one of those jobs that if you uh, are realistic about where you work, you stand a chance of being ridiculed or laughed at by either the inmate or by some in the administration. And that's one of the things that you need to deal with as you leave the real world behind and are encompassed by this negativity that I'm about to talk about. Believe it or not, correctness is a lonely job. And loneliness can create complacency. Supervisors, many ill prepared and poorly chosen for promotion, are often not backed up by the administration and perform what we call ad hoc duties or uh, adapt and overcome type of duties that are not outlined in uh, post orders but are rather more like shortcuts to get things done. The schedules are just as complicated as the officers and just as well under the gun by the administration as the officers. They must supervise knowing that the job will fall short before the end of the shift. They would know they will be disciplined for officers not doing their job as well as they not doing their job. And that there is zero tolerance for mistakes that are regarded as misconduct rather than giving the individual the benefit of the doubt that it was indeed a mistake. And thus they end up being reviewed by the internal affairs or the criminal investigative unit officer. And in most cases, they're found guilty on circumstantial proof or evidence that includes the word and testimony of an inmate against them. To say that workplace is intimidating is an understatement. The loneliness can be suddenly interrupted by the evilness of terror, hostage taking, incidents that include violence, serious violence, death, stabbings, blood pool scenarios that we see and deal with as correction officers every day interrupt the boldness and turns the place into a world of madness, the reality of it. So it's easy to say that um, correction is boring, but without a notice it can turn into a nightmare. Many officers don't get breaks and they eat on the run. And that's often misunderstood by the administration or management and the supervisors who tend to hound the officers into getting work done even if they don't have the tools to do it. It often leaves an officer uh, supervising 200 inmates or more by themselves. And the negative side of that is, is if they hear an officer needs backup or help, they are often restricted by political boundaries, unable to respond. And you know that's frustrating you're in a place like that. They multitask. I think that we all understand that multitasking means doing two things at once, if not more than two things at once. Multitasking is very inefficient and a very poor way of doing your job. But it's recreated by the need and the necessity of the workplace. There are no alternatives but 
to take shortcuts to get the job done. Correctional officers keep odd hours. They work night and day. They work seven days a week. They work over eight hours a day of overtime. And it's a one of those situations that um, supervisors, the good supervisors want to help them, but they're overwhelmed by paperwork that keeps them away from actually being in on shift and helping out the officers. Except is true to of course. The workplace is filled with anxiety, stress, and fatigue, making it a perfect formula for burnout. An officer has to be aware that the symptoms of burnout can sneak up on them. And they have to be aware that it can be deadly in nature in a place like this, as they can be put in the most precarious, potentially, situation in the penitentiaries among felons. Every officer has a protocol to follow. We call policies and procedures and post orders. The drawback on many policies and procedures and post orders is that the administration very seldom keeps them updated and, and applicable to the current events as they occur on shift. And because they are not uh, updated or revised or amended as policy requires them to, it pretty much leaves the officers up to adapting and overcoming the barriers that are created from this lack of guidelines in these policies. You gotta remember that this is not a people friendly environment. You gotta remember that people get disciplined for making the slightest mistakes and that affects morale. So having faulty post orders or policies does not help the officer do their job. Many officers receive an experience of burnout at least twice in their career. Counting their years of service is a bad habit, but they do it. Makes time go slow. In fact, it makes time go very, very slow. And the, the experience has been altered since the beginning. They have to admit that they have changed, the job has changed, and that the oath that they took to uphold the uh, server protect mission of the agency has been compromised by shoddy work for management practices and uh, lack of resources. It gets harder every time they put their uniform on to come to work and report for duty. Daily challenges consist of mind games between inmates, managers, and co-workers. And then their daily nemesis is the administration because they play their own games. They toy with shift assignments, rotation of posts, personnel rule changes, psychologically detrimental issues that drive down morale and performance. It all plays into the fatigue factor that we talked about. That includes physical and mentally draining on the body and mind as they do this work inside the penitentiaries. Correctional officers are criticized in four different directions. They're criticized by the administration. They're criticized by their supervisor. They're criticized by their peers. And they're criticized by their family or friends. But most of all, they're criticized by the media who has no understanding of what the job consists of whatsoever. And take daily hits in the newspaper about being corrupt, about being um, poorly, uh, uh, you've been there, you've experienced it, you know what the newspapers say about corrections, that we are Neanderthals, that we drag knuckles, and that all we do is beat people up. Given us no benefit of that whatsoever. So we all know that this is part of the uh, environment that we chose to work in. These disappointments have been back on us, whether we want to admit it or not. Officers work on a drone that influences their mind and body in strange and different ways. It's harder to blame unless you've been there. For those who serve in the military, you know what I'm talking about. For those who've been in law enforcement or even in sports and competition competitive uh, events, you know what a journalist does, and you also know what an adrenaline hangover is, so it's important that you keep that in mind. Officers work with PTS. Officers work with trauma or critical incidents they've endured, seen, or handled. Just like the service men and women that come home from the war, and just like those who've experienced critical and serious incidents in their personal life, officers work with PTS and other mental health disabilities. Prison work changes people. You're not the person that you started out to be, and you have to admit that even though you may deny that you may be drinking more alcohol, you may be drinking uh, more caffeine, you may be uh, using subscription drugs to ease the pain or go to sleep, and you have to admit that domestic violence 
has become a factor in many lives, whether it's uh, at home or a friend or a co-worker. You begin to see the symptoms of the uh, way the job has changed you. Correctional officers sometimes even now have their own problems. That's the downfall of this kind of work. And they live with emotional disabilities and uh, deny their health. This is normal. This is this is the type of uh, environment that uh, creates and fosters denial because for an officer to admit that they need help, it destroys their strengths and implies weakness. Even though the opposite is true, it takes more strength to ask for help than it does to uh, not ask for help. Uh, the culture perceives this to be a weakness and therefore what they do is they suffer in the darkness and write their words of frustration on the unwritten wall of silence, and we have to remember that. Officers perform the masochistic ritual of denial that they're taught on the job from the moment you hit the, the, the academy. You're told not to let your emotions get involved and get in the way. You're told not to uh, react in a humane or human manner. And you become cold and robotic to some degree. Unfortunately, officers have difficulty drawing of that, they inflict self inflict pain and sorrow in their own lives, sometimes taking their own life when everything else seems hopeless. The administration demands perfection. The public outcry makes you want to be better at what you do, but the media disappoints you. You read all about the negativity seven days a week, and nobody lets you forget it. The irony here that those that demand perfection from you, the administration, for example, and the managers, are in charge of your work. They lack perfection themselves. And hypocritically, they tell you what you're doing wrong, while at the same time, failing to address their own shortcomings that might help you do your job better. The longer you work in the penitentiary, the harder it is to find positive things. It leads to depression, it leads to aggression, and self low esteem, or low self esteem. No longer affecting the job you insulate yourself against these things, it starts to impact your family and friends and the way you do your social events out there in your community. The public forgets about stress and anxiety that is so prevalent in the tight prisons. They don't care, they don't understand what an officer goes through, yet the officer who doing their daily jobs suffer with weight gain, weight loss, Accident prone, forgetful, angry, they become sad, their emotions are out of control, and they show signs of stress. Sick leave can't be used because sick leave is frowned and used upon by the administration, and you become a target of punishment if you use the leave that you so rightfully earned. All the while, correction officers are dealing with poor habits because of the shortcuts that they take, poor eating habits because they're always on the run prescription drugs to either stay awake or go to sleep. And abuses by many inmate population, the administration, the culture that exists, and leaves them, or many of them, crying, depressed, and fearsome. That creates a real paranoia that becomes a normal life or a normal part of your life as a correction officer. Be safe. Take care of each other, and thank you for watching.